Thank you for joining the Bible study at the Walton Chapel Church of Christ. We began a series last time from Hebrews chapter 11. Brother Houston presented the introduction talking about Hebrews chapter 11, the first three verses. And this week, in this lesson, we get into the first hero in the Faith Hall of Fame, the first example of faith that's given in this chapter is a man by the name of Abel. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4 we read, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. Now to understand why Abel is a hero of faith, it is important that we go back to Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 through 12 and study that account. We do not get to know much about Abel. Really only one event of his life is recorded. And it's in that one event that we see brings about his death because of the evil that his brother Cain did. And when we study about Abel, we normally also study about his brother Cain. But the writer of Hebrews does not discuss Cain and get into detail of Cain. The writer does not say by a lack of faith that Cain killed his brother. His focus is on Abel and what he did that was righteous, that was right. The writer of Hebrews begins by speaking about Abel's acts of worship. And by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Abel's worship was accepted by God, but Cain's was not. And what's interesting is this is really at this beginning of the heroes of faith is that it is with Abel and it's also interesting that you think about early on in the history of mankind you see one of the first judgments by God we live in a time when the religious world teaches that all that matters is that we worship God it doesn't matter how we worship God we just need to worship each in his own way we live in a world that says you should go to the church of your choice. But let us remember that Cain is, is not an unbeliever. He is not a heathen. In fact, he had spoken with God and God spoke to him. We see that in Genesis chapter 4. He believed in God. So what was the problem for Cain and what was the praise for Abel? Obviously, how we worship God matters. And this notion that we can worship God however we like is simply not true. It's wrong. If it were true, then Cain's worship would have been acceptable to God as well. Abel knew that how we worship God matters. Therefore, by faith, we see Abel was able to follow what God had prescri prescribed for worship. Cain, however, did not. Cain was upset that his worship was not accepted. But God's response was quite simple. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, we read, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and it desire, its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. True trust in God means that I will worship God His way, not my way. Abel trusted that God wanted the sacrifice offered the way that God said. Cain did not trust God in that. Cain trusted really in himself, thinking that his way was just as good. We cannot have this arrogant attitude before God and please Him. One aspect that we see about Abel is that he gave his best to the Lord. The Bible tells us that he brought the firstborn of the flock and the fat portions. These are considered the very best by the Lord, and it is the, the best that Abel offers. He offers God his best. There's another statement made by the writer of Hebrews that tells us more about Abel. Notice the writer tells us, that it was through his faithful offering to God that God commended him as righteous. God accepted Abel's gifts. The writer concludes this segment by stating that even though Abel is dead, he still speaks. 
Do you think that Abel knew that his life would be recorded as a legacy of faith? Do you think that he knew that thousands of years later that uh, his life of faith would still be remembered and used as a teaching tool to these Hebrew Christians? But faithfulness does leave a legacy. Abel's faith still speaks to us even today as we studied in this lesson, as we examine his faithfulness. What spiritual legacy are you leaving? Will you re be remembered for your work of faithfulness as you serve the Lord? Will you have been someone who made an impact in the lives of other Christians? Will you be someone who followed up with the spiritually sick? Will you be one who helped the physically ill? Will you be one who was hospitable and helpful to others? What kind of legacy are you leaving? So as we continue to tour the Faith Hall of Fame, the next hero that we come to is Enoch. If you'll look in Hebrews chapter 11, this time verses 5 and 6, as we continue, we read, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We need to think about what it says about Enoch. We would expect to read a lot about a person who did not see death. That doesn't happen very often. So we turn back in the Old Testament to Genesis chapter 5 and we read about Enoch and yet all we find is a record of genealogy, a brief mention of him and notice that Genesis chapter 5 places emphasis on the fact in this genealogy that each person died, but then we come across the record for Enoch. And look in Genesis 5, verses 21 through 24. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Not a lot of details, is it? The lack of details concerning Enoch's life is interesting. He did not die, and yet we have very little information about his life. His son, Methuselah, has perhaps more notoriety because he lived to a ripe old age of 969 years. I think the natural question that we have about Enoch is why did Enoch not die? To help us find the answer to that question, we need to consider the morality of the people at that time. You see, within three generations, the morality of the people was so bad that the scriptures records these words. Genesis 6 and verse 5 tells us, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We think that we see our society going down the tubes because of its immorality, but consider what Enoch was putting up with. But Enoch did not sit back and simply bemoan the deterioration of the human race. Rather, he was preaching warnings to the wicked people. We read that in Jude verses 14 and 15. I think we learn a powerful lesson from Enoch, and that is the ability to trust God, even when no one else has faith in God. We have the challenge to put our trust in God when it seems no one else will. Living in a world that continues to move further and further away from God, we need to be drawing near to God. 
And then we come to an important statement that's in association with Enoch, and it's important we realize that. And that is that without faith, it is impossible to please God. We cannot walk with God unless we're faithful to God and have faith in Him. There's simply no way to have a relationship with our Creator if we do not surrender our lives to Him and entrust our lives to His sovereignty. I want us to really see the force of this statement. The writer of Hebrews here did not say without faith it is difficult to please God. I think we often perhaps treat this text that way. But it is not difficult to be pleasing to God when we have no faith. It is impossible, the Bible tells us. So how do we do that? How can I be faithful to God all the days of my life? We can be people like Enoch who stood up against the crowd because we know that God will reward us for our stand for Him. We can have the strength to walk with God because we know that God will give us a reward. That should be our motivation. Keep in heaven in mind. That's how all of these heroes of faith as we study, Lord willing, in the weeks to come, they had their sights on something better than this earth, this life. They were looking unto a city whose builder and maker is God. Are we looking toward heaven? Do you really believe that God exists? That he created everything from nothing by the power of his word? And do you believe that if you are obedient to Him, that you show faith to Him all the days of your life and are faithful unto death, that He will give you that crown of life, that He will reward you, and you can be with Him one day in heaven. We need to, because God is faithful. God means what He says. Earlier in this letter, in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18, it says it is impossible for God to lie. And that is our hope, it says in the next verse, in chapter 6 and verse 19. It's that, it's that anchor that we hold on to, that God is faithful. He means what He says. Do you believe that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him? And we know what it means to diligently seek Him. We just finished recently a series from 2 Peter chapter 1 where it talked about how we need to diligently add those qualities that Peter lists there to our lives. And if we do that, we will never fall. As we study through these men and women of faith, examine your own faith and make sure it's strong and increase it and become closer to God. Let's go to God in prayer at this time. Please bow with me. Dear Father in heaven, we're so thankful for your word. We're thankful that we can study about faith from Hebrews chapter 11 and examples of faith, of people we can relate to that have trials and temptations and how they overcame and how they were faithful to you. And we pray that we will follow their good example. We're thankful for men like Abel and Enoch that saw fit in being around wicked people to be righteous, to be faithful to you. Help us to be that way. Please be with the church at Walton Chapel and congregations all over this world of your people. We pray that we will all strive to worship you the way that you have told us to in your word, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that we'll seek to please you in all that we do, that everything that we say and do will be in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear God, thank you for every opportunity you give us. Thank you for everyone that encourages us in our life to serve you. We pray that we will not let this world change us and turn us against you. Help us to overcome Satan and the temptations that he hurls our way, that we won't give in to sin, that we'll realize we have a choice when we're tempted, 
and that we'll look for the way of escape that you provide. Thank you, dear God, for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.